Okay, welcome back everybody. We're continuing with our chapter 8 notes on work and energy, and this is example 8-2. Um, we have a, a lifeboat system right here, and this thing is uh, sliding down this ramp. And now, uh, lifeboats on, on boats tend to fall through, tend to free fall through air into the water. We're not worrying about that. We're just worrying about um, it moving down this ramp right here. All right, so just think of this surface right here as being uh, the base level. Well, let's go back and uh, review real quick what, um, what work is. We said that work is force applied over a distance times the cosine of that angle phi between them. All right. Well, work can be done by people, it can be done by machines, but it can also be done by gravity as well. Uh, gravity, which always acts straight downwards, right, creates a force, right? We, we call it weight. And so this mg right here is, is the weight force that gravity is, um, is doing for us. You can actually get gravity to do work for you as long as you do work against gravity first. For example, if you, um, you have to apply, apply some sort of energy into this boat to get it up to the top of the ramp, right? Or if you roll a, a bowling ball to the top of a sliding board, you're putting work into it. <clears throat> now gravity is ready to do work for you by sliding it down. So that's what's going to happen right here. But instead of a, a sliding board and a bowling ball, we have a, an escape pod on a, on a ship, okay? So, um, what do we have going on right here? Well, what we don't have is this angle. It keeps being marked as theta right here. It really should be the angle of phi. We're going to be calling it phi because it's a special angle between the direction of motion d right here, and the force that's being applied. So what we don't have is that angle phi right there. Um, but we do know that it's a right triangle, and we can calculate what phi is. So let's go ahead and find that. Well, we have this angle. We have, if we were to turn it sideways, and I'll do this real quick, all right? We like angles based off the horizontal. Um, we have that angle, and so adjacent to it is 2.5 meters, and the hypotenuse is 5 meters, right? So we have the adjacent and the, op and, and the hypotenuse, so we can say that the cosine, the cosine of phi equals the adjacent, which is 2.5 meters, over the hypotenuse, which is 5.0 meters, and that'll tell us what that angle phi is right there. That's the angle between the force that's being applied and the direction of motion. What do you get for that angle? All right, if we take the inverse cosine of 2.5 over 5, that tells us that that angle phi is 60 degrees. All right, so our angle phi between the, um, the direction of motion down the face of the ramp and the direction of the force, the weight force, mg, is 60 degrees. All right, so... What I'm going to do is take everything we have right now, and I am going to shrink it down and give us a little bit more space to work, just like that. All right, so let's look at our actual problem right here. First of all, we have this 4,970 kilogram lifeboat. So the mass of the system equals 4,900, oh, I put a dot right there, 4,970 kilograms. That's all of them. It's about two and a half tons. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, the dis displacement or the distance d equals 5.0 meters down the face of the ramp. And uh, we don't really need this anymore because we use this vertical height. We kind of use that as the adjacent side to that angle right there. So that's 2.5 meters. We don't need to worry about that much anymore because we already use that. The question, oh, by the way, we solved for phi, right? We already determined what that was. Um, that was 60 degrees. So the question is how much work is being done by gravity. Remember, gravity can do work for you. You just need to do work against gravity first. Well, um, we know that work, my pen isn't writing, there we go. Work equals force times distance times the cosine of that angle phi between them. Now let's write out what our force is. Okay, well the force that's being applied, in this case by gravity, is mg, right? The weight force. 
and the distance is, well, that's still d, and phi, cosine, phi is 60 degrees, and so we'd have a cosine of 60. So let's just put in our, our mass and our gravity and our distance, and we should be able to solve for the amount of work that gravity does for us. All right, so work is going to be, what's the mass? 4,970 kilograms. That's the mass of the, the little escape boat right there. D is 5 meters. 5.0 meters times a cosine of 60 degrees. That'll give us our work that gravity does for us uh, on this escape pod system. And I get a grand total of, let's see, 12,425 what? Joules, right? Joules of work that gravity does for us. I'll fix that two right there. All right. It's positive work that gravity does because gravity is acting downwards. It's moving the, the escape pod downwards. So the direction of motion and the direction of the force, the weight force, are somewhat in the same direction. It's certainly not negative. And so gravity is uh, achieving that much work for us. If you wanted to push, let's say, let's say the escape pod went to the bottom of the ramp. To get it back up to the top, you would have to put one or 12,425 joules of energy back into that thing to get it back up to the top. That's why it's difficult to roll a bowling ball to the top of a sliding board or to move something uphill. Um, you've got to give gravity that much work, and then when gravity takes over, it gives you that much work back when it slides that thing down the ramp for you. So that's example 8-2. Hope that made, made sense. If it didn't, please make sure you ask me, and we'll make sure we clear that up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.